What's up again, everybody? Well, I don't know if you knew this. I don't know if you saw this over the weekend or you heard about this, but Dromai is actually making waves in the meta in a variety of ways. First of all, picking up wins at Road to Nationals that are draft, and also picking up wins at Road to Nationals that are classic constructed, or at least, at the very least, like cutting into the top fours and eights and just really making waves in a way that a lot of people, I think based on the way that they were talking, weren't expecting. So today we're going to go through and just rank all of the dragons on how good they all are. If you want to play Dromai, you probably want to know what dragons are good, what dragons are not so good, maybe more situational. Let me know in a comment below how you would rank these dragons. I was actually going to do this in a, like a straight up like 12 to 1 countdown list, and then I thought, no, this is actually a little bit better. We're going to put them into tiers. So the four tiers are this. There's situational. These are dragons that are good in very specific situations or just more situationally good than they are universally good. The, the cool thing about Legend Story Studios and dragons that they've created is that all of them are playable in some way, shape, or form. All of these dragons are useful. Some of them are more situational than others, though. Then there are solid options. These are like the step up above situational. You run them maybe every single time, maybe not every single time, but they do provide more universal benefit than they do just the situational one time off kind of use. These, this tier, these are great dragons. These are dragons you almost always consider. You maybe don't play it one time or another, depending on the matchup or uh, really what your deck is trying to do with dragons, and also depending on the format as well. That is a very uh, specific thing we should talk about because if you're playing in sealed or in draft in like a limited format, you may want to play a dragon that you wouldn't necessarily want to play in um, constructed and we'll talk about that that's where these two tiers i feel like are really gonna f like settle in to maybe i should i'm just gonna call this one look i'm gonna call this one um limited this is like good and limited i feel like that's a good way to describe this format or this uh this tier right here these are great dragons and then tier one is chromai chromai is tier one okay so starting with chromai chromai is tier one this dragon is always good it literally does the thing that helps you play your game if you don't play a red hand if you uh like don't play any red card at all and you like have a zero card turn like you full blocked your opponent was doing something crazy and you have a chrome eye on board well you can still push the chrome eye and then still like attack with like one thing like another dragon on the board like chrome eye gets around so much i think chrome eye is the best dragon uh, it's also really cheap. Um, yeah, put it on the screen. There it is. Look, it's pretty cheap. It's a really good dragon. If you get Chromai, you should almost always play Chromai. Like, I don't know why you wouldn't play Chromai. Um, there's arguments as well to play this another dragon we'll talk about here in a moment uh, on the Chromai tier as well. And I do think... Uh, I, I want to know if you think Chromai is the best dragon or if you think this other dragon we'll talk about here in a moment is the best dragon. But I put it Chromai tier because I feel like you literally always run Chromai if you can because it gives you the action point when it attacks. And that is an incredibly good thing. An incredibly, incredibly good thing. Um, next up, let's... What do we want to do? Next up, let's do my dragon. Okay, I promise I'm not going to... Uh, you know, sugarcoat my dragon and give it more extra points. It is Chromite tier. It is super. No, it's not really Chromite tier. Um, this is. So you would think that my dragon Themai would be situational, right? Because it's like really good in in Wizard, and then otherwise it's not good. But I would actually argue that it's like um, right above that. Maybe not exactly limited, but uh, uh, yeah, I guess you could call it limited. You can almost always play this. The cool thing about uh, Themai here is that. Even if you're playing into a matchup where you don't expect your opponent to have a lot of, uh, oh, I don't know, defense reactions, for example, you can still just play this as like a 3-4 body. So if you're playing Blitz, you can still just consider putting uh, Thumai into the list, like a 1 of into the list. He's a silver bullet. This dragon is a silver bullet into Wizards, into anybody that plays heavy defense reactions, into anyone that has activated abilities that they would use on your turn. That's a lot of things. That's why I don't think he's really situational. That's why I say Thamai is more in the limited category, right above situational. And again, all of these are playable in their own right, in their own respect. But I think because there are so many things, and this is perhaps like one of those moments in the meta where we haven't quite realized 
the potential of Thamai, what Thamai can actually turn off. The moment you play Thamai, like, your opponent can't activate any of their equipment if it's an activated ability. They can't play defense reactions. They can't play instants. If you know there's this card that people have been playing and talking about called Oasis Respite, that card gets turned off in limited by Thamai. So even if you're playing into, like, um, Phi, for example, and your opponent you think may have drafted, like, a couple of Oasis Respites, you can still play Thamai in draft against Phi, and uh, they can't uh, Oasis Respite. So that's why I wanted this one to be right there. Thought a lot about that. Um, here we go. Yenderai. I think Yenderai is really close. It's really close back and forth between these. You can almost always consider it in these formats, but I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to put it in the limited format because he's great in limited. He's really hard to deal with in limited in just general because of the endurance counter that comes onto it. Then you have to remove said endurance counter, then actually go and kill uh, the dragon. And that's what makes it a little, a little bit tricky. So in limited, I think it's like way better. I don't necessarily think you just immediately slap this into like a, uh, a list in classic constructed or blitz, but you can certainly consider it. I think it's fantastic in limited. Um, let's go to, let's do one of the um, legendary dragons. Let's do, um, I don't know. Oh, let's do my favorite one, Tomeltai. Where's Tomeltai? Tomeltai, I think, is great, but sadly to say, very close to not being great. Maybe maybe he moves down. And here's the thing about Tomeltai, and this is true of all the legendary dragons. All of them are prohibitively expensive, and because they are expensive, they are a little, at the, at the current juncture, they're a little bit difficult to get out. And the reason is you have to build your deck with enough resources in mind or pitch stack to find him later in the game and sometimes that's not necessarily going to happen especially if the format's really fast so in like classic constructed or heck blitz is very fast already you're not really getting there to like all these legendary dragons but if you're going to play one of them down it is going to be this one because universally just gonna just wreck shop and destroy equipment destroying equipment you kill like a tunic you kill some boots, you kill whatever you want. This destroys that equipment and you have a major advantage in the game. And that is why I think he's worth sitting in this spot. Now, um, I will follow this up with uh, this dragon right here. Well, no, no, let's see. I wanna do, I wanna do this one. I think this one. This, uh, this dragon, eh, situational. Okay, so. If you don't know the effect, I'll put it on the screen, it's not as impactful as you think. Now, it's always good to take a card from your opponent's hand. That's always cool. But if you're building your deck in limited, all red, you can run into problems against... I mean, even though, I like, as Dromai, you kind of dominate the Icelander matchup by just making small dragons. But if you wanted to get this effect off, first of all... It's, it's hard to pay for. Second of all, if you hit off the top in Limited and you miss this effect, it's like, uh, it's not great. In fact, I did play this in Limited and like uh, I hit half the time and half the time I was like, cool, I took a card from their hand. The other half the time I was like, cool, I looked like I didn't even do anything. I just attacked for four. That was pretty good. Attacking for four generally is pretty good. But if you're looking to use the effect, it's very situational. Um, overall, not great. I do think um, Dracona Optimi, so Dominia is, for me, situational. Dracona Optimi is, is like a tough one. Is by far the most expensive. Dracona Optimi is by far the most expensive. So the question becomes, where does it fall? Because getting this effect is, is pretty powerful. But paying six for it doesn't seem enough to me to really have it stick. Now, I do want to point this out. I haven't mentioned all of these dragons can be popped by Phantasm. So I'm not factoring that into my um, ass assessment. We'll put it that way. I'm not factoring it into the assessment, but I am factoring the cost of these dragons into my assessment. And for me, six is it's probably too expensive for the effect. The, the saving grace of Dominia is that it's four. You know, I can pay four. Um, Tomeltai, I might be giving too much love, but I do think the, the power of destroying um, an equipment is just too great to ignore, and you can get so much advantage that you can pay five for it and commit to it and then try to get the effect. And That I think you can get there for. Um, 
Dracona Optimai, I don't know if it's better than Dominia, but uh, paying six for it just seems so prohibitively expensive. You can arsenal it and like find the two blues and then like play it off that, so maybe it's like worth it, but for me, it's just not. The effect is really good. Uh, dealing all that arcane damage is super fine, but like still not super great. Okay, um, speaking of things that deal arcane damage, Asvalai is pretty solid. I would say Asvalai is, um, I would say it's like right here. Uh, because I think Asvalai is more of a just direct threat on the board that your opponent has to take care of if they, well, can take care of if they want to. Uh, whereas Yenderai is more of a direct threat on the board that they can't really easily take care of. So I'm putting uh, Asvalai right here. Asvalai is pretty solid. Um, yeah, Vincerakai is cool, but is Vincerakai's effect good enough? Yeah, I'd say it's like right here. I would say Vincerakai kind of hovers in this limited range. Um, maybe you can say Vincerakai's better than Asvalai. Maybe you can say it's better. No, I, but personally, I think I'm hovering it right here. Uh, it's very close. These two dragons, to me, honestly feel very close to each other, which I think is kind of cool because this one costs three. Uh, and it does six damage, but it gets removed by literally anything. Like, you can sneeze on this dragon and it dies. Uh, but it also deals three arcane damage if it deals any damage at all when you attack with it. So, um, they, they feel similar. This one has, like, just um, upfront value, um... Or no, maybe not upfront value. This one probably has more upfront value because you're attacking for six with it immediately. This one uh, just has the uh, the value in that you're not paying anything to get it out there. This one costs a lot, so it costs a blue. That being said, it's not too bad. Uh, but I do think that that one's pretty solid. Uh, Uvia is interesting because Uvia, I thought Uvia was going to be like a little bit better. But to me, Uvia feels very situational because you have to have the Ash in order to make it. I think Uvia is actually way down here. Um, I don't think it's necessarily super great to have. It does attack for one, um, and it's got a huge body. It's like six. Uh, but you have to have the Ash at the beginning of your turn, and then you have to choose to take that Ash and turn it into the Ash Wing at that point at the beginning of your turn, uh, which you can definitely do. Nothing is wrong with that. But it does turn off some um, effects that you could already have on your cards, basically, by taking away the Ash. It's not that bad, though. It's still useful. Like, you could still play it. I do think Thamai actually has a little bit more playability um, than Uvia, but maybe that's just me. Again, tell me in a comment below. Uh, Necria is interesting. I think Necria is great. Um, I think Necria is greater, I should say that. It's funny, because... There's probably not going to be a lot of people playing Necria like in their lists because I think they're going to want to play, well, these other two. <laughs> I'll just say it. They're probably going to want to play these other two. But Necria, I think, is really solid. I think you get it out there and uh, you have it attack and deal damage and uh, you know create ash. It costs three, so it is expensive, but I do think it is super solid. Um, Miragai. Miragai is chromite tier. This card is chromite tier. It does the other thing that you want uh, your dragons to do. Okay, so chromite gives you an action point. It allows you to play off a zero card hand. It is like just encapsulates all that is great. Plus it attacks for a decent amount, right? And if it's destroyed, like by Phantasm, you still get the action point. Mitagai turns off Phantasm for all of these dragons. So like these two in concert are disturbing right super good like these two are auto includes in um, anything that you want to build dragons into uh, and so Mita guy is probably sitting right here i don't know you could maybe even argue there um but really either way works for me and then finally we're left with uh kyloria kyloria is kyloria better <laughs> kyloria is chromite tier but my question is is kyloria better than chromite is chromite better than kyloria because Kyloria is like Snatch on a stick. I saw that described yesterday in a, in a stream, and I was like, yep, that's exactly right. It's a 4-2 that can draw you a card um, if it uh, is allowed to hit, and uh, it could just keep going, because it, it's like Snatch would go again on a stick, which is even better. Um, I do think uh, Kyloria definitely sits around here. I can't really picture where it's at. I think Chromai is still number one. I think Kyloria may be like right here. But it's close. Uh, this is how I feel about the dragons. I do think maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm just a little sweet on uh, <laughs> on Tomeltai a little bit because it's the coolest looking dragon in the game, in every game ever. This dragon 
is the coolest looking dragon ever. Uh, but maybe it's maybe it doesn't need to be up there because it is so expensive. Uh, it's funny because I feel like these are so, so situational in comparison. I do think like you'd also argue that like this is probably situational, but I'm uh, I just think I'm giving it too much credit. So you could argue this maybe uh, and maybe this moves around. But this is about what I feel like these dragons are going to uh, as far as what what you're going to see when you play into drama i think these are always going to be things you think about uh you could maybe think about this as well because destroying your equipment immediately changes the game for you if you're playing in a uh, main format these in limited are super solid you're going to see them and uh you're going to see them do well in limited any of these you're going to see in limited as well that that's really really good but this is how I feel about the dragons, and I'm so excited to see Dromai do some serious work. I hope Dromai becomes this crazy force that people have to battle against, and then in the supplemental set in a few months, we get some like really cool storyline where like, I don't know, Dromai and Fire like fighting and crazy things happen. If you enjoyed this video, if you got something out of it, if you learned something, feel free to make that number go to that other number as always. Thanks for watching.